Hey guys, it's the Faceless Beanie and this weekend I got access to the Deimos Arcana test cluster so this video will highlight all the new stuff that's coming along with my initial thoughts. Let's get right into it. Let's start with the Steel Essence change. There'll now be 5 daily missions granting you 3 Steel Essence each of 15 in total. Great way for players who can't stay for longer endurance runs in the Steel Path to get Steel Essence, especially since you don't even need to have the daily mission node unlocked. You can just queue into other players who have it unlocked and team up. However, the other method of getting Steel Essence has changed. Eximus units won't drop them anymore. Instead, Acolytes will drop 2 of them each time. The Acolytes are guaranteed to spawn on any Steel Path mission and they'll spawn right on top of you. The Steel Essence drops from them are affected by resource boosters and Smita Kavad buffs as well. They only seem to spawn within an acceptable time frame if you continue killing enemies, usually around the 5-6 to six minute mark, no matter the mission type. We'll probably get more specifics on what triggers them to spawn in the near future. If you're downed, even if not by the Acolyte himself, he will still disappear, so this can become a problem for unorganized squads. The negatives are that depending on the Acolyte, they can deal tons of damage in a split second, so non-tanky Warframes will suffer, and they are also seemingly immune to status procs as well, which will hopefully be changed. On the test server, Tashin had Umbra Forma in his Steel Path offerings for 100 Steel Essence, so it looks like this could be a potential rotational offering which is really nice. Let's move on to the weapons. I didn't have the time to Forma these, so these are just initial impressions after ranking them up once. Starting out with the primaries. Bubonico is an infested arm cannon that uses shotgun mods and launches grenades. Primary fire shoots rapid flex of poison and alt fire launches viral grenades. Fun to use and probably will be viable with proper modding. The Sporothrix is a status based sniper rifle with one level of zoom. It has in it viral and slash damage and deals significant bonus damage on headshots. Seems strong enough and fun to use even without a proper build. Finally, my favorite. The Proboscis Cernos, which is an infested bow that shoots tentacles that have an ensnare effect on enemies within a certain radius from the point of impact. Then they explode and deal corrosive damage. Great on its own or coupling with the melee to quickly clear enemies. Then the secondary, the Catabolist, which fires a corrosive beam. Reloading the weapon throws the magazine and explodes, dealing a ton of damage. A very strong secondary. Finally, the melees, the Aram Spinoza, which is a war fan with decent slash damage. The heavy attack is what stands out, making it feel like a shotgun of sorts. Despite that, it's still not great and unlikely to see too much use. Finally, the Pulmonars, which are infested nunchucks with inherent viral damage. This one is very underwhelming and feels too slow and clunky to use in its current state. Next, the infested kit guns. The first fires an infested beam with some lock on. This one causes insane screen shake, so testing was limited, but it's as good as most other kit guns currently available. The second fires an explosive projectile that either bounces or explodes into smaller clusters, depending on if it's a primary or secondary kit gun. I built a secondary and it was super fun to use. Next, we move into Arcanes. So there's three Warframe Arcanes and four Kit Gun Arcanes, and they effectively work as a set. So if you choose not to use an infested Kit Gun, then the Warframe ones will be useless as well. Basically, the infested Kit Gun Arcanes called Residuals provide a 20% chance to deal some form of status damage and create a zone, then apply that status type to the Theorem Arcanes, the ones you equip on your Warframe. With Theorem Arcanes, you need to stand in those zones that the Residuals create to benefit. If you leave the zone, the effect will last for 5 seconds and diminish completely. Without going into too much detail on each effect, these arcanes feel too weak and the kit gun ones especially have too low of a proc chance even at max rank. The concept of standing within a zone created around enemies makes more sense for melee weapons, not kit guns. In their current state, it's difficult to see how any of these arcanes would be used over the others. Let's move into the Deimos changes. Grandma now has a remedy store where you can trade Deimos resources for various tokens. 
Then isolation warp bounties are no longer tied to form of fast rotations. Then there's new bounties which take place in the demos vaults which are locked behind isolation vaults. So you'll need to complete an isolation vault before being able to access these bounties. You can also only take the bounty from the mother corresponding to the completed isolation vault so public matchmaking will be almost non-existent for these. Within these bounties there's three new types. Truffle Hunt, which involves safeguarding a juggernaut while he digs up drugs for daughter. This one takes a little too long as most of the time you're waiting for the juggernaut to get a move on. Then Infested Mist. In this one you pick up an emitter from a containment unit and look for fissures to seal with the emitter. Definitely more fun with a squad and can't really complain too much about it. Finally, Fluid Extraction. This one requires you to pick up a spore sack, throw it at enemies to mark them, then kill them. Marked enemies are not obvious enough and the sack doesn't seem to ever mark enough enemies which makes this take forever. Then the new Necromac Bone Widow. The first ability grab has an awkward hitbox and most of the time you'll end up missing your target. Using a grabbed enemy as a melee doesn't work too well and throwing them seems to do little damage as well. The second is a shield meant to block incoming damage from the front but I couldn't really tell if any damage was being blocked at all. The third Repulsor is a great crowd control. It's a great crowd control ability, bringing enemies in for melee attacks. Finally, the Exalted Sword Kalim is not good and doesn't feel like it belongs on a Necromach. Hopefully the current stats are placeholders as it is easily outperformed by every other Archmelia at this point. The new art gun Thanotech Grenade Launcher is great. Lots of damage and fun to use, similar to the Mosolon. Finally, let's move into Warframe changes and augments. Ash's Blade Storm now applies the full number of marks to targets at once and energy is consumed once per target instead of per mark. Very good change here. Atlas's Bulwark performs an AoE slash when damaged by enemies based on health lost. This does absolutely nothing and it's difficult to suggest any improvements as Bulwark on its own just isn't that useful in general. Chroma can now rotate elements on the fly for Elemental Ward and Spectral Scream which is great, however they don't take effect while the abilities are active so that slightly negates its usefulness. Spectral Scream chains damage onto enemies but you won't be able to tell as even with its 100% status chance it still takes ages to accumulate status procs and does little to no damage. There's still no reason to use this ability. Necrus's Soul Punch instantly kills targets below 25% health and turns them into a shadow or heals existing ones if maxed out. Decent change, although it'll be difficult trying to time your kills to get this to actually work. Next, Nidus's Larva. Enemies killed while within Larva have a chance of generating a stack for Nidus. Yes, even if allies kill them. A good change and nothing to add. Finally, Zephyr. Airburst has its damage increased and targets with less than 30% health become open to Parazon finishes. Tornado is slightly better at holding enemies now. Tapping creates stationary tornadoes and holding creates wandering ones. The tornado change is great and actually makes Zephyr much more useful. Airburst unfortunately still doesn't do nearly enough damage to be usable. Finally, we end with the Augments. Garuda's Blessing Talons performs a 7 meter AoE around Garuda, providing a 100% additional combo count chance when hitting targets affected by bleed. Great in theory, but the animation is clunky and in reality doesn't do much. Gauze's Mark Crash creates an impact shockwave which leaves behind a vacuum that sucks enemies in. Great for crowd control and definitely will find some niche usage. Then a Revenant's Thrall Pact which provides additional 25% primary weapon damage from each active Thrall. Great in theory and actually provides a decent damage buff but is counterintuitive as most of the time you just end up killing your own Thralls. Finally, Wisp's Critical Surge. Teleporting to a reservoir grants 10% critical chance to sniper rifles per meter travelled for 9 seconds up to a maximum of 350% critical chance. Since this is limited to sniper rifles, the only realistic usage is in the Plains of Eidolon when hunting Eidolons. And that's about it. Keep in mind, this was all a part of the test cluster and nothing shown is final for the live build. This video is meant as a sneak peek to what's coming as well as some critique. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.